what is it? <laughs> Leafy sea dragon. There's another one. <laughs> I never see It's called the sea dragon. Sea dragon. Look at the difference in the color. The from the gold more to the dark brown. Mm -hmm. He almost looks velvety, doesn't he? Beautiful. I don't think I'd want to mess with him, but he's beautiful to look at. Bonnie Payne has, instead of being more of a dullish like color, she begins to get that uh, green color that we see on the large here. The head becomes more pronounced. And most importantly, she actually be able, she's actually able to reproduce uh, because she becomes a male in every aspect. Now that is only a one-way transformation, but she can't go back after she becomes a male. So we had to uh, switch her name from a Josephine to Joe now. Um, and there is a girl in here somewhere. I saw her earlier, um, but I lost track of her. I'll keep an eye out for it. It's really interesting to see, um, especially side by side, to see how much of a huge difference it is changing uh, from a female uh, to a male. So I'll keep an eye out for that. It's a peachy brown fish with a white stripe uh, through the center. Yeah, I saw her earlier too. So. You know, the other thing about that Napoleon, by the way, real quickly, is that it's a, it's a large looking fish in this exhibit here, but in actuality, in the wild, this fish eventually can grow to be as much as 400 pounds, maybe as long as 5 to 7 feet, so it's actually a very large fish uh, once it becomes full grown. Uh, speaking of very big fish that are going to get even bigger, there's an even bigger fish which is the Queensland group. It's probably down off to my left, two very big gray fish. And they actually have an instant, <laughs> uh, an interesting relationship with the smallest fish in it, which is another member of the Ras family called the Cooner Ras. Yeah, that's right. You know, if everybody looks down towards my fins, towards the bottom of the exhibit, you'll see those groupers that we're talking about. It's a the big group. Yeah. grouper has a big, giant mouth, as you can see. Now what happens is sometimes with those little oh, help from the zebra shark there, when uh, when the grouper uh, is, is so interested, what they'll do is they'll swim over to this snap coral over here to my right, this yellowish coral, and you'll see there are these little itty bitty blue and black fish called winger rats. What happens is, is that grouper, the big giant grouper that we've looked at, will tip its head down, lift its tail up just a little bit, very subtly, but what that does is it signals to the rat that's okay to go ahead and swim through the rat's mouth, through the, uh, the grouper's mouth, and swim through the grouper's gills, so it's actually swimming in the fish. It's cleaning parasites and dead skin, so it's really an interesting symbiotic relationship between both the grouper who's getting a bath, if you will, and that little finger rat who's getting a little so it's a win-win situation. Um, now speaking uh, of symbiotic relationships, you know there's one animal in here that people might not know even is an animal, and that is actually the coral uh, itself. There are coral here at the aquarium with a little bit of a secret. We do have a really good shot of that Queensland group where you just kind of came up a little bit. He's going right below you now. A big gray fish. Yeah, that fish, by the way, uh, that fish is even larger than the Napoleon rat. That fish can grow to be about seven feet long. Weigh as much as 800, 900 pounds when it's fully grown in the wild. So that, that'll be an enormous fish. One thing you can compare that with is right now that fish is probably 150, 160 pounds. So you can imagine when they're, this coral can grow as slow as, you know, fractions of an inch to an inch uh, per year out in the wild. So what we've done is we've had this coral manufactured out in Arizona. Looks very, very real, but again, for conservation purposes, it allows us to have a wonderful exhibit and at the same time, you know, preserve the wild. I would encourage everyone, though, if you want to see some beautiful, real coral, there is an actual coral exhibit. Uh, if you do kind of a, a 180 around this exhibit here on the back side after my presentation, go take a look over there because there are some wonderful pieces there.
And uh, those ones we actually got from customs. People are trying to bring it into the country legally. Customs um, took it up and gave it a home here at the aquarium. So that's where some of our beautiful uh, real coral is uh, from back around the corner. Yeah, you know, here's a great, great look here at our zebra shark. He keeps going back and forth in front of the glass. You look at that and you're saying, Aaron, why is that a zebra shark that dumps all over it? Why would we just call that a leopard shark or something? That'd be a good question. And in some parts of the world, it does have different names. But here in North America, it's called a zebra shark. One of the reasons is when it's little, it actually has stripes, not uh, little socks on it. Until probably a, a few months in, then it starts to lose the stripes. It gets those dots, but it gets that name. Uh, you know, stripes like. So it had stripes when it was born, and then they broke up in the spots. But, so yeah, go figure. Um, <laughs> Let's see, um, do you have any advice for our guests? Uh, what we can you do to help out with the coral reefs uh, in the ocean? Uh, you know, I do. I, I think that it's similar to the advice that we give when we're talking at all the exhibits, which is, number one, we need to be very cognizant of the fact that everything we put into our storm drains eventually finds its way out into the ocean itself. And minor changes in ocean uh, temperature, minor changes in ocean water chemistry can actually cause a, a whole reef to bleach out. So we need to be very careful how we treat the ocean. In addition, I would suggest, as I always do, that you know, it doesn't take much when you're at the beach to go ahead and grab a piece of garbage up and see it sitting on the sand. When we don't do that, I think we all know the tides come in and the tides go out. What happens is take that garbage bag out into the ocean. Again, you can imagine that's not real good for the fish, nor is it real good for the water quality. So we need to take care of, uh, of the ocean so that we can go ahead and have uh, beautiful exhibits like this here, but have it actually out in the wild. That's some good of us. And little things really do go a long way. Definitely, you know, pick up your own trash. Uh, take that extra stuff and pick up. Uh, now, I understand you're also one of our volunteer divers. What are some of the fun things you get to do as a volunteer diver?